Now to do that, our question generally whenever we enter a transaction is, is there a, a form up here designed specifically for the transactions that I'm talking about? Now, if I'm putting money into the business, there's not a form up here that's specifically designed for me putting money into the business because that's not a normal day-to-day -day operation. It's only gonna happen periodically. The next question is, is cash affected? If cash is affected, then we can use the cash related forms. In this case, cash is going up, so I could use a deposit form or go to the register. Uh, if cash isn't affected and there's no other form to use, then I'll use the journal entry. So I could use a deposit form. I could go into here and enter a deposit and use the cash deposit and then record the account down here, which would be some kind of equity account. However, usually when, when I enter something into the system uh, that is a deposit, I would only really use the deposit form if it's coming through the, through the customer cycle. In other words, if I had an invoice and then the receive payment, there's often like a little pop-up in the bank deposit to take it out of undeposited funds within the deposit form and put it into the bank. We'll see that in the future, but that's a great tool and that's what's in the deposit form. If you had a bunch of receive payments from a bunch of different areas, uh, different sales, then you can use a deposit form and deposit them at one time. However, if I'm just making a deposit from myself or, or something that's not linked to a receive payment or a sales receipt, then I might just use the register, which is kind of a faster way to enter the deposit. It's similar to like the bank feeds. If you had a deposit through the bank feeds, then that's like a similar kind of faster process to enter it sometimes. And then it would usually make, it'll still create a deposit form. So that's the, that's the method I'm gonna use. To do that, I'm gonna go to the hamburger. Well, let's go to the tab to the left and then go to the hamburger. And then I'm gonna to go to the accounting on the left and the chart of accounts. I'm gonna practice using these chart of accounts. If you were in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts is located in the bookkeeping area here, and then the chart of accounts on the left. Okay, so we're gonna then say that uh, cash is going to be going up and the other side's gonna to go to an equity account. Now we might not have an equity account set up down here yet, so let's take a look at our options on the equity. It's in order, assets, liabilities, and then equity. So the our main equity account is what we changed from retained earnings to the to the owner's uh, owner's equity, which you can see right here. I can see that it doesn't have a balance. That's the main one. Now I could put it directly into uh, that equity account if I want to, my owner investments, or I might break it out into another equity account, which is they have one here called investments. So I'll call that my owner investments. And I'm going to put it into this uh, investment account. It's important that it's an equity account and not an income account. If you put money into the bank and it, it's recorded as income, then it might be something that you're going to have to pay. You might pay taxes on it accidentally. And that's not something <laughs> you typically uh, will want to do. So you've got to be careful if you're using bank feeds you also need to be quite careful. If you have a system, which we'll talk more about in the bank feed course or section, where you're just entering the deposits from the bank as revenue, you gotta make sure that if there is a deposit that's not revenue, such as one from you or a loan, that you don't accidentally include it in revenue, or you're gonna end up paying taxes on it most likely, which is not good. So I'm gonna, we could go into either of those registers, this register or the register for the equity account. I'm going to use the checking account because that's probably the way most people would see it. And then in the checking account, I can use this register to enter the deposit form quickly. So if I hit this little drop down, they give me all the types of forms that might be used within the, the checking account. I'm going to use just a deposit type of form. And we're going to say that this is as of, let's say it's the first thing we do. So let's say it's going to be 010123. And then the uh, the payment, I'm just gonna put owner for us. Uh, this isn't as as important a field because owner, uh, because, and I'm gonna put owner. Now my only options here are customer or vendor. And since it's a deposit, I'll say uh, a customer, but obviously it's not a perfect system given the fact that I'm not a customer, I'm, I'm the owner, right? So anyways, I'm gonna put the memo. This is gonna be owner, 
owner investment investment or something like that and then the deposit is going to be i'm going to say sixty-five thousand that we're going to take out of our checking account putting it into the business checking account those two things are something that we generally want to keep separate and then i'm going to call this owner investment which you can see is an equity account here so make sure it's an equity account so if i save that then 